Hello and welcome to another episode of Mythologos, the podcast of all things mythological. And in this episode, I will be talking about one of my great heroes, Stith Thompson, one of the uh, great folklorists of all time. I'll uh, tell you a little bit about him. I'll tell you why I admire him so much and how I have found uh, his work so useful. So I thought for a change of scenery, we would do this on my Lenovo laptop. This is where I, I don't really edit these videos, but this is where I pull the elements together and uh, render the video and make the title cards and load them on the YouTubes and where I record and edit the audio for the audio episodes. This is also where I am learning Emacs and LaTeX and grep and all that sort of thing. So this is like my production slash hobby and learning laptop. So uh, just something different for this episode. So... There's very little biographical information about this man. Uh, I know next to nothing about him. I've never found a career-spanning article about him. I have never found a biographical article about him. And there are only two pictures of him on the internet, and this is the one good picture. So this is not someone uh, that you can dig up a lot of handy information about. Uh, maybe one day someone will do a big biography. I would love that. But for now, uh, there's only so much I can tell you about the man himself. So Stith was born in 1885 and died in 1976. He was born in Kentucky. He got his bachelor's degree at the University of Wisconsin in English literature, which is interesting. Uh, and that was in 1909. And he wrote a couple books about English literature, and I've not read them. I've only read his folklore uh, stuff. So I've never, I don't think I've even ever found one of his books about English literature. I'm sure they're wonderful. He got his master's at the University of Berkeley in 1912. At Harvard, he studied Indian, American Indian myth and folklore between 1912 and 1914. And then he became an English professor at the University of Texas between 1914 and 1918. And that's when he began to collect folklore. Uh, and this included things like sayings and aphorisms and riddles and ballads, not just what we think of as, as folklore stories. And this is what led to his creation of the Motif Index of Folklore Literature. Volume 1 released in 1955. Now, you don't hear about this much these days, but uh, it was something that started in the mid-19th century, these voluminous indices, you know, these indexes of motifs uh, of myth and folklore. It's a part of early primitive anthropology, and it really reached its zenith uh, in the mid-20th century, the 50s and the 60s. And then it dropped off a steep cliff into a deep ocean and was hardly ever heard from again. <laughs> it is rare that I ever come across a reference uh, to a motif index unless uh, the book or the article in question is based entirely upon uh, the work of a, a specific folklorist or anthropologist who created or made heavy use of one of these indexes. So it's something that was a vogue and it's fallen out of vogue. Uh, but his, to me, you'll see it was so simple. It looks confusing at first, um, but it's so simple and easy to navigate and uh, easy to understand. It's very useful and kind of like Unix. <laughs> That's what I love about it is you can sort of mix and match it and uh, get more utilities out of it than than just a straight index. Um, so we're going to go over here to my home away from home, archive.org. And if you do a search for Stith Thompson, you will get some things that you can look at. Um, you can see what the motif index of folk literature looks like in print. Now, these are impossible to get. Um, you cannot get these in print. I have never found an inexpensive edition of this in print, even a r relatively recent printing from like the 70s or 80s. You're looking at hundreds to thousands of dollars. Uh, so what I have is this. Um, 
I found this elsewhere on the internet, uh, whoa, like 15 years ago, maybe even farther back than that. And this is just a uh, vanilla text PDF. And this thing is 2,500 pages long. It is massive, and he never did complete it either. Um, but what you can do is you can borrow, which means you have 14 days to read the book, uh, and then you just borrow it again. It's a virtual library. There's no late fee. <laughs> so, but you can read uh, The Folktale by St Thompson. And this is one of the very best introductions to uh, folklore and folktales. And uh, it's a great introduction to his work. So I recommend that highly. Um, but the, you can sort of take a peek and, and get a look at his work here on the old archive dot orgs. And uh, so we're going to go over here. Uh, full URL storyseeds.org slash story search. And uh, this web page uses a couple of different uh, motif indexes, but they uh, heavily use Stith Thompson. So I'm going to give you a little glance of what this looks like. And then I'll explain how it's laid out and what you're looking at. Let's just uh, do this search here. Okay. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing a letter, some numbers, a decimal point, a number, another decimal point, a description. Uh, we have what appears to be a bibliographical reference. And then some information uh, that uh, doesn't really make much sense on the surface. So imagine 2,500 pages of this. <laughs> and at first, I was very confused. Uh, but I was determined to learn how to use this thing. So let's just go over here to uh, this website. It's a ruthenia dot ru dot Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I I have no idea, but it's a uh, Ruthenia dot ru slash folklore slash Thompson slash index dot htm, and this is uh, this is it. <laughs> if you're looking for online resources. This is it for the past twenty years. Uh, this is the online resource that I've been able to find. Uh, so you have over here the index itself. And you have the index to the index. So let's just say we're going to go over here to animal motifs. And it's already giving some stuff away there. What does the letter represent? The letter represents what the motif is. So it was like A for mythological motifs, B for animal motifs, C for motifs of taboo, D for magic, E for dead, and so on and so forth. Every letter of the app alphabet except for the letter O and the letter Y. Uh, nobody knows why that is, possibly because O, a capital O, looks like a zero, and uh, I don't know why he didn't use Y. So you've got the first part. This is referring to an animal story. So what about the number? Well, this is actually pretty simple. <laughs> B1, B1, B2, B2, B5, B5, B7, B7, B10. We get into the hundreds. We get into the 1200, into the thousands, and so on and so forth. So you have the motif. And then the motif has a numerical designation. And then when you add to it, you have a decimal point. So the structure here is you have the motif, the motif number, you have the description, you have the country of origin, and then you have the collection that it comes from. So this would have been Cross's collection. Or you might have uh, also a direct bibliographical uh, reference, and then you have the name of the collection. 
So there's no possible way you are memorizing 2,500 pages of these descriptions. And these descriptions are so excellent. When you really start to use the motif index, uh, and you compare it to other motif indexes, and you compare it to encyclopedias and dictionaries of myth and folklore, these are just some of the best descriptions uh, that I, I've ever encountered. You really kind of got to get get into it and, and get into the rhythm of it, but it really makes accessing it, and it really makes remembering it easy. Uh, so yeah, it's really a matter of use. And... I don't know how long this site has been up. I think I first found this about 20 years ago. It may be older or it may be from uh, right after uh, that period. But uh, yeah, I just spent so much time on here until I found that PDF. And then I was able to use the PDF. And, you know, you just start getting used to the language that he used to the you memorize the, the letter designations you start memorizing the number designations and then you can start mixing and matching see this is there could never be a finished version because you finish it but nobody really picked it up and continued with it these massive indexes uh, as I said they just went over a steep cliff and that was the end of that they uh, the vogue the popularity of this method did not endure but I've been using this to map out every single motif that is in Omniad. And I'll explain this when I do the Omniad video or videos. Uh, when it's all finished, you'll be able to print out in some form, uh, some sort of codex graph or something. I don't know. But you'll be able to actually map it out. And what I found by using, uh, you need some sort of index to do this. You can't do it without any kind of index. Um, but what I found is using the methods that I'm using, um, I will start formulating things according to the parameters that I've set up, and then I will find them. You know, for instance, I will find them in here, uh, and uh, this tells me that I'm on the right path. It means the methods that I'm using me using are leading me to make the same kinds of conclusions. Uh, that were come to through the whole process of culture. And that's pretty tremendous. Uh, when it's all finished, when Omniad is all finished, I, I really think uh, that's going to be one of its most uh, compelling and impressive features, um, th that I was able to concoct these combinations, not modular Joseph Campbell combinations, but really complex combinations of motif. And I find myself turning uh, to the Stith Thompson more and more as I work on that. And uh, yeah, it's definitely worth checking out if you are interested in folklore and mythology. And, you know, there are other indexes, as I said, but this is the easiest. Uh, you just have to use it. And, uh, you know, sites like this allow you to do ser searches. And that's a good way to learn it. This was another site before, and I thought it was gone, but then I found they only they moved it and they renamed it. Um, but I, I use this a lot at the beginning. Uh, it's a good way to learn it, to memorize it, to put in different number and letter combinations and see what you come up with um, and look for specific things and uh, start familiarizing yourself with the various combinations that you can come up with. So that's that's about it, really. That's uh, the Stith Thompson motif index. And I hope you enjoyed that and that you found it interesting. Uh, I've been wanting to talk about him for a long time. Unfortunately, there's just not a lot of information. There's not a lot of uh, anecdotal stories about how we put it together. He did work, you know, he had many assistants over the years. And uh, but uh, I've not been able to find anything. So that's as much as I know about him. So thank you for listening, and if you found this enjoyable, if you enjoy my content, then uh, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Like this video, leave a comment, talk to me. I want to hear from you. And uh, I will be back soon with more Tux Lives and more Mythologos, but that is all for now. So until next time, good luck to you.